Me Shepherd. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Firstly, let me welcome the leader's conversion to virtual participation. A big majority of those who participated in today's debate did so safely and efficiently from a remote location. So can I also ask him to stop resisting remote voting and switch the system back on so that all members can vote according to their own conscience and without breaching public health guidelines? Can I also ask, when are we to expect a third party opposition day, which is now long overdue? Madam Deputy Speaker, today we saw the government push through its deal with a complete lack of scrutiny and examination. The government created this timetable by refusing even a short extension to the transition period, hoping that Christmas and COVID would provide a smokescreen for its awful deal. The government and probably opposition will be hoping that this concludes the matter, but it does not. Many members in the call list did not get taken today and many more who wanted to speak didn't even make it to the list. So I would have thought the first order of business in the new year would be to continue the discussion on this deal and allow those members the chance to participate. And I want to ask for a specific debate on the Scottish fishing industry, which has now been betrayed by this government. The removal of quota swaps and leases, which this deal includes, means that in five years time, fewer white fish will be landed in Scottish harbours than happens now. This is a major kick in the teeth for Scotland's coastal communities, and the government ought to be prepared to debate how it will mitigate the effects of this disastrous deal on them. Madam Deputy Speaker, the leader may be aware that earlier this afternoon, the Scottish Parliament voted by 92 votes to 30, not to give to consent to today's bill. Given that, can we now have a debate on the consequences of this deal for devolution and on what this House should do when people vote in the Scottish general election for the right to choose to become an independent country? Finally, Madam Deputy Speaker, can I wish you, the leader, the shadow leader, and all colleagues a very happy new year when it comes? Leader of the House. Madam Deputy Speaker, may I heartily reciprocate those kind good wishes of the uh, Honourable Gentleman. I hope he has a splendid New Year um, and that he and his party and his friends and family and everyone in this House has a very jolly New Year and a better 2021 than perhaps it's been 2020. Um, every week the Honourable Gentleman complains that he lost the referendum in 2014. However, this does not change the fact that he lost. And when he lost, it was said by the SNP, which we now know as nationalist with a small n, um, that the result was for a generation. It's still for a generation. That generation has still not passed, and he's still lost. So I basically just have to repeat what I've been saying for the last few weeks. And the fishing industry that he mentioned is one of the great beneficiaries of Brexit. And isn't it extraordinary that the Scottish nationalists, with a small n, wish to hand that back to Brussels to lose all the opportunities for Scottish fishing so that they can be regulated from Brussels? It is quite extraordinary. It must be, what is it, Stockholm Syndrome that they've got, that they have been imprisoned so long by the EU they can't bear to leave. They want to be controlled even at the cost of their uh, fishing communities. Um, the Honourable Gentleman complains that the uh, debate was not long enough. Well, it was long enough. It was... Um, probably 50 years of debate over our membership of the European Union in truth. But if he wants to speak further on it, I know that the House will be waiting with bated breath for his contributions in the Global Britain debate, which will be held on the 11th of January. As regards the prospect of increasing the period of transition, that would have been a very, very unwise thing to do because it would have potentially entered us into um, billions of pounds of risk because it would have been into the new multiannual financial framework. It was fundamentally important that we didn't take that risk and that we left when we said we would. It's also quite important to stick to commitments made to voters, and we had promised the voters that we would leave, and so we did. Uh, as regards proxy voting, proxy voting allows people to vote effectively and safely and with their conscience. The Honourable Gentleman may not have noticed, but actually the Government uh, Deputy Chief Whip has facilitated people voting against the Government if that is what they wish to do, that the votes are being recorded according to the member's desire, not um, what they are ordered to do, because actually you cannot order a, a member what to do, and, and members always vote of their own accord, though occasionally their friends give them helpful advice. As regards the move to have more hybrid technology, 
The Honourable Gentleman, as I know he is in Scotland, may not have noticed that London has gone back into Tier 4. We have therefore adopted a similar scheme to the one we had uh, earlier in the year when the highest level of restrictions was in place. This is merely responding to the reality in the country at large, which we always said we did, so it is consistent. But I look forward to us getting back to normal and having a full, bustling chamber without perspex screens and plastic markings and signs defacing this great chamber.